one of the advantages that we've talked about of decision trees is that a human expert can actually look at a learned tree and understand to at least some degree how it's making the decisions. And in particular, we can look at the uh, individual questions and ask whether or not the questions are, uh, are rational questions for uh, our intuition about how the decisions ought to be made. However, as we've seen, individual decision trees, in order to do interesting, complex tasks, actually have to be quite complex themselves, and they tend uh, they they tend to be harder to interpret. And the bigger trees also can be more brittle uh, than the smaller trees. On top of this, as we start to get into uh, forests of trees, especially as we're getting into the hundreds of different ensemble elements, this becomes really impossible for a domain expert to come in and really understand how the decisions are being made. But as we're trying to roll out our machine learned uh, models out into the real world, it really is important for us as practitioners to be able to explain uh, why these things actually work. And one, one thing that we can do is to try and address this idea of uh, feature importance. So what I mean by this idea is that we'd like to be able to answer this question of, given all of these features, perhaps hundreds or thousands of features that are coming into our models, which ones are the most important in constructing the uh, learned models? And, and if we can answer this kind of a question, then our domain experts can come back and give us uh, some feedback as to whether or not these are rational ideas, or maybe we can actually inform the domain experts as to what they should be looking at. So if we can get this process right, uh, we can help those experts either focus their models or even create uh, new models. It also gives us the ability to be more efficient in how we construct future models. If we can determine that, that a whole bunch of features are not really important at all, we can uh, stop using them for the training process. And this has a larger implication uh, when data collection is very expensive. And if we know that we only need to be paying attention to certain kinds of features, then we can be much more focused in the uh, collection of the data as well as the, the storage of that data. There are a whole variety of approaches to measuring feature importance. The one we'll focus on is this uh, first one uh, that's built into the random forest classifier. And this is uh, really a measure of uh, the average reduction of impurity that uh, specific features can uh, give us when they're used in questions. And this is a, a very general idea. It doesn't matter where the features occur in our trees. We can also look at questions like, uh, how often does a feature uh, occur within a tree? We can count the frequency. We can also look at how uh, features appear within the tree. Do they appear up at the top or do they tend to appear closer to the, to the leaves? When they're up at the top, they tend to be the more important features because they're making the really big distinctions. And only as we start to get to the leaves, that, that's where we're going to be making our very fine distinctions. There's also this idea of important sampling that's getting a, a lot of use in the literature now. And this is the idea of uh, we first start with our, say, our validation data set. We ask how well a learned model performs with that validation data set. And, and then we take one feature and we cor corrupt the values uh, in that data set for that one feature. And then what we can do is ask how well the learned model performs using this, uh, this corrupted data set. And if the performance hasn't changed from the uncorrupted to the corrupted case, then that tells us that the feature is not particularly useful. But if the performance actually changes dramatically, then that tells us that the feature is very important for making decisions. And, and this idea we can actually apply to, to lots of different kinds of models. So for, for today, we'll actually, we'll just focus on the first of those. Uh, but we'll, we'll play a little bit with, with important sampling here uh, in not too long. So let's look at some code. So the, the context here is where we left off in our last uh, demonstration. We have our forest uh, classifier that we've already defined. And in this case, we were, well, let me pan up there. Oops. 
Oops, I pan too far. There's our forest classifier. So we handed that forest classifier to uh, crossval predict since it was doing tenfold cross validation. What it does is it actually makes a copy of that forest classifier uh, ten times, fits parameters for each one of those, and and then we measure performance. Um, what that means is that this original forest classifier uh, instance that we've created hasn't actually been trained yet. So um, what I'm going to do is to to actually fit our full data set to our for, to the forest uh, classifier. And uh, so that that training happened very quickly. And the forest classifier has a variety of properties that we can query. And one of them is called uh, feature importances. And that underscore uh, tells us that it's uh, an internal uh, variable. And this is a score that uh, that is assigned to each feature that measures this uh, average reduction in impurity uh, as the feature is used uh, in various kinds of questions. Looking at this array here, it's, it doesn't tell us a whole lot other than it gives us a little bit of a sense of the, uh, the distribution. Let's actually look at a histogram of, of these values here. Oops, let's actually plot something in that. So uh, ax dot, the hist uh, method will generate a histogram for us. And let's add some labeling. So horizontal axis is important, and the vertical axis is, is our count. OK. So there's our uh, distribution there. Uh, so there are some features that, there, well, that's that actually right in here. This is one feature right here. Uh, this is another feature right here. The, those have relatively higher uh, importance than uh, other features. Then there's this mode here, and then uh, a second mode over here. And if we had to start cutting these uh, up into uh, different regions, I guess I would say that this region on the left-hand side is uh, represents not really uh, very important uh, features. These are mildly important, and over here are the most important uh, types of features. Okay, so let's let's uh, so these numbers are interesting, uh, but we would, as practitioners, tr like to understand uh, which features we're actually talking about. So let's go ahead and, and uh, look at that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a set of tuples. And far up in this notebook, as we were putting, as we were extracting our data uh, from the CSV file, we created a variable called fields kinvel. So this is the names of the uh, fields in our original pandas object uh, that include both the position data and the velocity data. And it turns out it's exactly this set of features that we extracted uh, as for input into our models. And I invite you to go back and, and look at where that's coming from. And it turns out that uh, the order of field kinvel is also the same order as our, our features, and in particular, our uh, feature importances. I have no idea why we call it feature importances. I, I feel like I'm talking like a hobbit when I say that. OK, so this is, this is creating a, a set of uh, tuples. Oops, it's fields kinvel. That, that's creating a, a set of tuples. Uh, the first element of the tuple is the name, and the second element of the tuple is that feature importance. 
uh, associated with that particular name. And then the next tuple element is another name uh, value pair. And let's go ahead and print these out. So we're, go we're going to iterate over those tuples and print them out. So that slash T stands for tab. And we're going to substitute the name here and the, the uh, importance value uh, in for that percent F. So there we go. So now uh, we can actually walk down this list and get a sense of how important our different features are. So uh, our left wrist X, Y, and Z all sort of cluster in the same levels. Likewise for the right wrist X, Y, and Z. Uh, the elbow actually is, is uh, both of the elbows are not too bad. Uh, shoulder X, Y, and Z are also not so bad. As we start to get down into here, the, the ankles, ankles and feet seem less important, which is interesting. And then as we start to get into the derivative, the D is our velocity. Um, those velocities, for the most part, are uh, less important, although there are some, this is a, a fairly high number here. Okay, so, so that's a nice list to, to look at. It would, however, be nice if we could uh, look at a sorted list sorted by the, the feature importance value. So let's uh, do that. So I'm gonna modify this feature importance uh, list here. And we're gonna use a, uh, a function that's built into Python called sorted. So I'm giving it that set of tuples, the original set of tuples. And you have to tell it how what you're sorting by. And this is another little bit of Python magic here. We're going to create a, a function. Uh, one can kind of think of this as an anonymous uh, function. It doesn't have a name, uh, but uh, Lambda here, this, is, this, go, this refers to Lambda calculus, uh, where, where we just have uh, functions that don't have uh, side effects. Um, so, so this anonymous function takes one parameter x, and it's going to return a value. Um, I want to sort highest to lowest, so I'm going to take the negative uh, of the importance value, and we have to extract out the uh, value itself. So in, in each of the, uh, so x refers to the tuple, and x sub one refers to the value as associated with the tuple, and since we want to sort high to low, I'm, I'm flipping the sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute that. And now you'll notice that the, the highest, the, the highest uh, importance features shows up on the top here at point uh, 027. Left foot X velocity uh, is here. Uh, shoulder, right shoulder, left elbow, left shoulder, uh, left knee is, is here, wrist and knee. So we, we seem to have a, a good distribution of uh, elbows and shoulders and knees. What's interesting is that there are no Z components. The first Z component is right here where we're looking at left foot uh, Z, right wrist Z is also uh, important. Uh, as we pan down here, things are sort of gradually dropping in terms of importance, some point though, it kind of drops off relatively quickly and that, that happens uh, off in this vicinity here. So we're now, we're now in the 0.01 uh, range. One thing that's really striking to me, looking at this from a uh, practitioner perspective, is that the, the bottom uh, what, 25 uh, features here are all the derivative features. Uh, and that I'm going to have to sit, sit back and think a little bit about. Uh, there, there are derivative features that show up as high in the, uh, with higher importances, but 
all the low end ones are derivative features. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that tells us. Maybe, uh, uh, it, well, fundamentally what it's telling us is position is most important. Uh, where, where are your hands and feet uh, during the, the crawling process? And velocity certainly plays a role once we know what the positions are, but positions really have to come first. So moving my my left wrist forward and back matters uh, matters only if the wrist is also sitting uh, near the ground. So position, I think, uh, plays the most important role there. All right, so that's that's a, a quick demo of uh, feature importance. And as you are working to understand what the models are doing, and especially as you're starting to pick up these models and taking them uh, to the domain experts who know nothing especially about uh, machine learning, you want to be able to make some justifications for how these models are actually uh, working. And so presenting uh, some of this data can really help your case when you're talking to these uh, experts. They certainly will not appreciate notions like log loss and AUC, uh, but they will appreciate a description that says, you know, this particular feature, right shoulder X and left foot velocity are really important in, in making this, uh, this decision about, in this case, whether the robot should be triggered. All right, so we're, we're done with this uh, topic. Uh, and uh, now it's time to uh, take another big step in the ensemble uh, world, and this is uh, in the boosting topic.